Now the other part of the gluteal group uh, of nerves will be the inferior gluteal nerve, which is literally underneath the superior. And as you can see, you can see it there. And this is the nerve that supplies the gluteus maximus. And this is huge because like this nerve, uh, obviously it's, you can see how close it is to the sciatic nerve, which is this, so this thick piece of tissue that's the sciatic nerve. You can see how close the inferior gluteal nerve is. So literally, if there's a compression on the sciatic nerve due to, from the piriformis, then potentially you can have compression on the inferior gluteal nerve as well and you can have this pain spreading around the gluteus maximus and the all, all these muscles around here okay so that's what's really important so this is the nerve that supplies function to the gluteus maximus and then potentially if there is compression on this nerve then that means that the gluteus maximus will not be receiving sufficient signals from the brain and that is why some people are not able to engage this muscle what's really interesting to note here is that is the nerve roots um, that essentially these nerves begin from. So for the superior gluteal nerve, you've got L4, L5, and S1, whereas for the inferior gluteal nerve, you've got L5, S1, and S2, which is really interesting because the sciatic nerve roots are basically the same plus S3, okay? So literally the nerve roots uh, of all these nerves that we've just talked about uh, share a common kind of origin point with the sciatic nerve, and that's why symptoms um, you know, of these nerves, like compression and stuff, can be so similar. But at the same time, because they're obviously different entities, even though they come from the same kind of region, you can see how, like, where they're coming from there. Even though they come from the same region, they, they are different branches. So as you can see, they branch out into their own different functions. It's not always a question uh, or, or, or literally a lack of a skill of, you know, from the client, if that makes sense. Sometimes it's actually nerve compression, which is not allowing the, the mind to reach, the, to essentially send the right signals or, or the signals from the muscle to reach the mind. That's how it works. It's like, obviously it, work, it happens very quickly, but that's literally how muscle activation happens. Uh, you know, very, very quick signals going from the brain to the muscle and vice versa, sending information, constant data feedback, you know, and if there is a there's some sort of a compression there causing the nerve to not be able to send signals to the muscles from the brain and vice versa, then that's when you can also potentially get the lack of muscle activation.